Hi there. I built an AI bot that tracks competitor prices and alerts you to any changes. The best part, you can build one too without writing a single line of code. Whether you're a small business owner, e-commerce seller, freelancer, or marketer, this tool helps you stay ahead by monitoring competitor pricing strategies. I use Gumloop, a no-code automation tool that makes AI very approachable, even if you're not tech savvy. It's like Zapier or Make.com, but way easier to use. If those ever felt overwhelming, today's your lucky day. In this video, I'll show you first how this system works, and then how you can build one your own using Gumloop. Let's take a look at how this works. Our system pulls a list of URLs from Google Sheets. You can add any competitor you want to monitor. Once a day, or more frequently if you want to stay closer to them, our AI bot scans the web and scrapes pricing information. If a change is detected, you'll automatically receive an email update. Now, let's run a quick test. Since this is the first run, there is nothing to compare against yet. For now, the goal is simply to capture all the pricing data correctly and store it in a database, which is just another tab in our spreadsheet. Looks like we successfully scraped both websites. Our bot identified four pricing plans, free, starter, pro, and enterprise. It captured its name, their names, cost, and features. Zero dollars for free, starter ninety-seven dollars, pro to hundred ninety-seven, and custom for enterprise. Zero ninety-seven to hundred ninety-seven. Looks like all checks out. There's another feature I want to show you. It's pretty common for SaaS products to have um, to give discount for annual payment plan. So here you can see that monthly is nineteen dollars, but if we are ready to pay for entire year, then the price for a month is, dro is dropping down to 15. You can see that uh, our bot captured this standard $19 a month or 15 months billed annually. Okay, now the moment you were waiting for. Let's test if it correctly notifies you when the prices has changed. Of course, there are two problems with this demo. First, usually it runs in the background on the schedule and we can't do that, so I will have to manually start that. And second, we can't really wait for those pricing pages to get updated. So instead, I'm going to update this uh, price. Let's say that last time when we scraped this website, the price was $100. And now when we scrape it again, the price is going to be 97 because that's what they have on their page. So we should receive a notification telling us about this change. Let's see. Okay, it took it about 15 seconds to run. Again, it doesn't really matter because it's gonna happen in the background. What matters for our user is the email that they're gonna get. Pricing update, gum loop pricing change, starter plan price changed from $100 a month to $97 a month, view pricing page. This is exactly what we wanted to see. Okay, next I'm gonna show you how I build this system. Okay, let's take a look under the hood. Something that I like about Gumloop in general is how simple their design is. It reminds me of FigJam or Miro, any of those flowchart building tools. You have a bunch of components or what Gumloop calls nodes, and you connect them to create flows. Every node has input and output. Well, I guess in this case, uh, it's our starting node and it doesn't really have input. Uh, it, it, is, it is input node uh, itself. You can find a collection of nodes here. It's a node library. You can use different AI elements. You can use web scraper, typical flow controllers like input, output, filter, text manipulation, basically different nodes that operate with different data or different apps, file operations, nodes that allows you to run code or call APIs, etc., etc. In uh, my case, uh, I'm using Google Sheet Reader nodes to take our URL list. But before we dive in into the details of this specific um, flow, I want to give you a high level idea of how this bot operates. So there are four pages within this project, index, router, check for updates and URL. Uh, this is the index one. And here we're just grabbing our URL list and passing it to the next, to the next subflow. Um, subflow is basically a flow that is embedded within within another flow. I think it's a pretty sweet idea because it makes it easier just visually to see 
what's going on. It allows you to break your flow into several parts instead of being overwhelmed with the spaghetti uh, of uh, different connections and different modules. What we can see here is that Google Sheet is passing something into the router subflow. And now we can click on router tab to actually see what, what exactly is going on there. Continuing with uh, our high level view, what happens in router subflow is we are checking if we already scraped this website and decide what to do next based on that. If we scrape this website, then we trigger check for update subflow. And we haven't, then we go to add URL subflow. So add URL and check for updates. This is two uh, simpler subflows. This should give you an idea of uh, how this workflow operates. And now we can dive into the details. Let's go back to the index flow. So we use a node called Google Sheets Reader and we selected Price Watch. That's a Google Sheet that we use for our URLs. Selected specific sheet um, with all the URLs there. And we pass this list of URLs to our router uh, subflow. Um, the input and the output for for those nodes are list, which means that we are not passing just single URL. It means that we're gonna pass one by one every URL that we have captured in our spreadsheet. This is also a reason why we use this error shield wrapper. If one of those URLs happen to be um, broke and wrong or something else, it, they're gonna break the flow. By default, if the flow breaks, it will stop the entire process. But since we are using error shield, it will just skip uh, that specific iteration, the one that has a problem, and continue with the next iteration. So this allows us to prevent our flow from, uh, from being stopped. Okay, let's uh, look into router subflow. Router subflow is using input node, which grabs uh, data from, uh, previous, uh, from previous flow from our spreadsheet and it uses it to pass as a search value to Google Sheets Reader. This component is set up to search for the search value that we are passing, which is URL, in our database tab. One thing that I want to show about this component is, um, is how to create search value. As you noticed in our index flow, when we looked at that one, we didn't have search value. We didn't have any input for Google Sheets Reader. It's because it's uh, advanced uh, it's in advanced settings. So here we uh, clicked on hide or show more options and we need to select the search, uh, search column. Uh, once we do that, uh, the search value will be available to us. What happens is that if we find the right search value and let me just show you what I mean by this. Um, when we find the right URL in our database, we take the entire row. So timestamp, URL and plan and use them as an output. So we will pass URL and plan um, if, we, if we can find the right URL. However, if we don't find the URL, then we assume that this URL haven't been scraped yet. And in this case, we're gonna pass it to our add URL subflow. Uh, there is another nuance. In order for us to have this error search value uh, output, we need to turn on pass inputs through on our error shield. I hope it's simple enough. We, we are basically routing to either pass plan um, into check for updates, or if we don't have this URL scraped yet, then we're gonna add it, uh, then we're gonna scrape it. We're gonna pass it to add URL subflow. Let's take a look at add URL subflow. Structured pretty similarly, we have input uh, field that grabs that URL that we passed from the previous flow. Ignore the default value. This scenario is definitely does that. Um, it's useful when you are testing something, but in our case, we are passing URL, uh, so it's not going to use the default value. Then it goes to a website scraper, which uses URL to scrape everything that it can find there. Um, and then we use AI to extract useful information from that scrape, from that web page scrape. So here you can see we basically providing our prompt. We ask AI to capture all pricing plan, including annually if available, and their information. We give it an example. Uh, show an example usually improves AI results significantly. So we have plan one monthly, $9 a month or annually $8 a month, and then list of features. After that, we are saving this extracted information by using another Google Sheets uh, node. This time it's a Google Sheets writer and it saves this plan information into our database. We also use another uh, gum loop 
default um, out of the box uh, node. It's date date time node. I just set it up for convenient format and Eastern uh, time zone. Okay, now let's see what's inside check for updates. This is probably the most complex flow we have. It has two inputs. Basically, there is two things that happening in parallel. On one side, we are grabbing a URL from a spreadsheet, scraping it, extracting uh, information using AI. And on the other side, we are taking information that we already have in our database for this URL. Then we are combining it using combined text module. We use this symbol to separate them. So it's going to be one text, but there is going to be this symbol uh, that separates it with, inside this text. The reason I do this is because we can only provide one text input uh, to our AI model. And we need AI help defining if there was any changes. So as a context, we provide in our combined text of old pricing plan and new pricing plan. And as a prompt, we ask AI to compare new pricing to old pricing. If pricing hasn't changed, it should return no changes. And if it has changed, that it will return a specific change. And we provide it with examples. You're already familiar with error shield wrapper. This is another one, if else. What it does, it applies condition to the module inside. So the condition that we set up here is if it does not contain no changes, then do A, else do B. So let's see, the, uh, let's look at the outputs. You can see that it has three outputs on the if side and uh, three outputs on the else side. So we're going to start with else outputs because it's just much easier. Um, this output is going to be triggered if there were no changes. In this case, we'll just uh, output that there is no changes. Since we're running this flow in the background, user not going to see this. What they're going to see is um, what happens if there is a change. So we're going to pass context and response. Context is that combined message of old and new uh, change. What we need to do with that message now is we need to separate it back. We want to get that new pricing plan. Remember that character that we used? So we are going to separate the message using this uh, character as a split. Um, split text node will create two different uh, list items. And uh, one of them, the first one, is the one that we need. It's the one with a new pricing plan. So we use get list item index zero to pick it up. And we are passing it to a Google Sheets updater to update our database. So we know next time um, what the pricing plan is. Going back to our if model, if response uh, passes the response from our AI. And if you remember, in case there is a change, AI will just respond with that specific change. So what we want to do is we want to send email with that response. But first we need to combine, we need to create body and subject for that email. So for body, we use combined text node. We take input as our response. So there has been a change, um, let's say from starter plan got updated from A to B. View pricing page, and we are given a URL to, to view this page. And for subject, we're just saying pricing update, and we're also using URL, so user knows right away what, uh, uh, what, what company updated their prices. And then we are passing this to uh, texts uh, into our Gmail sender node that sends emails to a specific address and also can use a specific sender uh, display name if we want to. That's it. That's uh, the entire system. This was my first video, so thank you for sticking with it. I'm not going to even ask you to subscribe, but if you have any questions or if you tried to build this flow and got in, into any problems, please, please let me know and I will try to help. And stay tuned, I'm planning to build more workflows using Gumloop. Bye.